It's another seven days since we last met on this program, Readers for Growth. Tell me, how much reading have you done? Have you spent more time reading? My name is Busola Faiga Okwelu. Welcome to the program. And I have with me this week, I have uh, Grace Omoche. Hello, Grace. Joseph Haruna Abbas. Michelle Ogundele. David Haruna Abbas. Nice having you. Uh, not forgetting Daniela Larry Babalola. How are you? And uh, Victor Omoche. Welcome onto Readers for Growth. Um, well, thank you for the question, uh, young ones. Welcome to my house. Uh, it was um, when I was uh, in the House of Reps as deputy speaker. It was very interesting. I had to preside over 360 members, together with the speaker, and the members we were all equals. We represented the same constituencies. We go to the National Assembly. We had elections, and the speaker and I were chosen from amongst equals. It was, we had to manage the house, uh, work closely with members, uh, motivate them, and also guide them. Uh, and it was a very interesting time for us. We worked in collaboration and in harmony with all our colleagues. We, we made laws for Nigeria, laws to do with ed education, to do with roads, to do with water, uh, children's rights, women's rights, um, governance issues to make the country better for all of you so when you come to our own age you will have a better country to inherit as a deputy speaker did you have to read oh that was a uh, compulsory in life you must always read i say that you must do three things every day uh, the human being has three parts the body the mind and the soul for the mind, you must read every day. For the soul, you must pray every day. And for the body, you must exercise, if possible, every day. So in the House of Representatives, as deputy speaker, I read constantly. I had to prepare for the day's proceedings by reading the Constitution, reading books on lawmaking, uh, reading motions from members on the floor of the House, Reviewing the other paper that had the business for the next day. Uh, reading is, is, is compulsory. For you to be a great leader, you must be open-minded. You must be a voracious reader. You must be patient. You must be a thinker. And you must have the welfare of the people at heart. A variety of reasons. I will begin with the home. The parents must teach the children how to read and read to them regularly. And then going to the school, the teachers must emphasize reading culture. The children must be able to read properly, to speak well. And you see, reading makes you to understand the world. Those who are widely read can talk about America, even if they haven't been there before, just from the books. Uh, so reading is very important. And uh, the reason why perhaps the culture is declining is because of the lack of emphasis. The schools, the primary schools, the secondary schools, universities must emphasize uh, the reading culture. The fact that students must read something every day. Yes, well, 
it's, it's still down to regular emphasis. Somebody once said that to hide an information from some people who don't read is to put that in a book because they won't see it. Uh, what we can do is to make sure that we emphasize it, like this program now on TV. It's a wonderful program, and uh, it's good that it's aired prominently so, so people can understand the benefits of reading. Whether you are, whatever you want to be in life, you must read constantly. If you're a leader, you must read constantly so you have information, so you have knowledge, so you are, not, so you are analytical. If you're a student, you must read all the time. Uh, so we can do these things by forming reading clubs. For instance, uh, an NGO which I, which I support and um, I chair called Foundation for Youth Development. We have a program coming up soon uh, where we're going to teach people how to read and uh, children who are autistic will also be aided by experts so that they can develop a proper reading culture. Lawyers have a very important role in a democracy. Um, lawyers are supposed to represent people in court and to argue their case. Our law assumes everybody who is accused to be innocent until proven guilty. Uh, so lawyers are supposed to be the ones to prove people's guilt or innocence in the court of law. Therefore, lawyers must be hardworking, and they must be voracious readers. They must be enlightened, and they are officers in the temple of justice. They are to present the cases before the judges to enable them to see the innocence or otherwise of their clients. That's why every country in the world that is run properly and is making progress must be run in keeping with the rule of law. The law is very important. The law is the foundation of society. And that is why the judiciary, where the judges ad adjudicate cases, is very important. Because they settle disputes between people and between arms of government. And the judiciary must be respected and people must obey their orders because society is founded on the rule of law. Where there's no rule of law or disobedience of court orders, it's an invitation to anarchy and lawlessness. So lawyers have a role to play. Lawyers must be very bold, very courageous, and they must speak truth to power. Because those in power constantly need reminders uh, of what the masses are feeling so they can address their welfare. Uh, lawyers, by their training, are articulate, and they're the ones who make good advocates. And they must have clear consciences, and they must stand by the truth. At times, it's convenient to lie, but people should not lie. Lawyers must stand by the truth, and they must speak truth to power. And Nigerians must be given the benefit of the, of, the, of the legal due process, which assumes people innocent until proven guilty. That's what our law says. So lawyers are very important in a democracy. In fact, not just in a democracy, in every society, you need to have lawyers. Otherwise, disputes will be settled without recourse to the law, and that will be anarchy and lawlessness. Well, I believe that education is the very foundation of societies. And you have, if you have a well-educated mass population, that is the foundation and basis for prosperity. When people are educated, people are more productive, especially women. Women are very important in societies, and we must ensure that they are educated because they are the ones who educate the children. They spend more time with the children and they mold the children more than the men do. And education ought to be free and qualitative at every level. 
from primary school to secondary school to even university. Because if you have, if you have an enlightened workforce or populace, you can drive the economy to more productivity and life will be better for everybody. And indeed, government should see it as a priority and provide for it in the budget from the state to the federal level so that people, children of the rich and the poor, can go to the same schools and learn the same subjects and have access to education, education facilities to enable them to compete. The world is now global. People can sit down in London and access information in Nigeria. So our kids are going to compete in a globalized world. We must prepare them by investing in education. And for those uh, schools that are unable to afford or the, the children of the, of the poor, they should also provide school meals for them. Because they cannot learn productively on an empty stomach. So education is very important and government must re-emphasize and devote resources to it. And National Assembly must support the government to pass the budget on time and to increase the allocation due to education. It benefits to read. You grow higher when you read and you gain wisdom when you read. Readers who read to improve themselves, who read to educate themselves, and who read for success rule the world. For you to grow and become a senator, you must learn how to read. Read to understand. Read as many books as you can. Reading helps you develop yourself intellectually, academically, and otherwise. The secret to being proficient in reading is to read every day and to read outside of your curriculum, to read novels and to read books of interest. A well-read child is a cultured child, a successful citizen and the future of our great country. And that's why all parents need to encourage their children to read. Read today, read tomorrow. The book for today's session, Children, is my storybook on values for the African child. Values are very important. Without values, societies cannot develop. Without values, it is difficult to enforce law and order. Uh, the values that we should emphasize are values of integrity, of honesty, of sincerity, and of being our brother's keepers. That is why the two religions that are predominant in Nigeria, both Islam and Christianity, teach brotherliness, togetherness. They teach peace, unity, and they both abhor violence. And they say that we should all work together to build a great nation. So now I'll read from chapter 12. It's called Unity, the Pied Piper. It begins with a song. Peter, Piper, play your pipe. Play for daddies, play for mommies. Play for kiddies and for nannies, and friends and well-wishers. All house rats must rattle the way with the melody of the piper's music. Indeed, the whole city was in a festive mood as everybody put on their dancing shoes, dancing merrily to the piper's song. Peter the Piper offered his service, free of charge to send the house rats packing. They came out in millions from all their hiding corners. Mummies and daddies, folks and kindreds were getting fed up with the disturbing rats. Fat rats and small rats jumping in and out of their hiding places from the pots to bedroom windows. Country fellows had come together to ponder on how to get their freedom from the house rats that had taken over their city and homes in large numbers. As prayers continued to reach up to heaven, Peter Piper came up with his religious piping. 
He vowed that he would free the city from the disturbing rats. Men and women, ladies and gentlemen, kiddies and toddlers, all gathered around the city square in unity to cheer on Peter the Piper. As the Piper played his music, all the king's men joined in singing and dancing. To the amazement of all, the city rats started coming out of their dwelling places in a large number. The rats also joined in the singing and dancing as Peter the Piper carefully led them out of the city to the riverside beyond the city wall. The rats all rushed into the village stream and never returned to the city again. Unity is strength. United we stand, divided we fall. So the activities for, for now, for today, is one, draw a united team of players. Two, write three lines on the saying that unity is strength. Think about this and tell your partner what you wrote. Thank you, children. Thank you, viewers. Very elaborate. But the story, the conclusion of the story is that the city was besieged by rats. The people prayed and go answer their prayers and sent Peter the piper, who was very good on playing the pipe. And Peter played a melodious tune that brought the rats from the hiding places in the various parts of the city and assembled to listen to the Peter's music. And then they were led out to the stream, if on the village, never came back anymore to trouble the village. The people acted in unity by praying together. They identified the problem. They worked towards the solution. They prayed for the solution. And they finally came. And in working together, they were able to read the city and the houses of all the rats. So it shows that when you're united and you work together, you achieve better results. I'll start from over here. So tell me, just give me one sentence on what you have taken from this story. Very good, that's fair. Okay, what do you, what's your take on the story? No, I've spoken to uh, David now. Okay, so let me, should I stay there or should I move further? Okay, Michelle, okay, Michelle. Uh, Michelle, what's your take on the story? The story that, no, let me, no, let me, okay, okay, let me say, you know what I've read to you now, um, what do you understand from the story? Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. So now, Joseph, from the story I read to you, what do you understand? When Peter the Piper blows his pipe, all the rats will come out. Fantastic, fantastic. Gracie, what do you understand from the story? I understood that when Peter the Piper was blowing his pipe, um, all the rats came out from where they were hiding because of the melodious team of very good. Michelle, what's your take on the story? Daniela. No, Daniela. Yeah, sorry, Daniela. Daniela said it's good to be united. Yes. Fantastic, fantastic. Fantastic. When you're united, you can achieve more. Good, 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 good girl, Daniela. Victor, what's your story? What's your take on the story? I understand from the story that teamwork is very important. Fantastic. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, children. Thank you, Victor. Daniela, David, no, Joseph, Michelle, David, Gracie as well. Am I correct? Yeah. <laughs>
Left us else. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, children. Uh, thank you very much, the, ma Madam, for organizing the program. I'm happy with this uh, presentation. Thanks. Thanks. We can't underestimate the value of literacy and the value of reading. So my advice to children and to parents is that children must develop a healthy reading culture and parents must support them by reading to them constantly and reminding them to read every day. They must take their school work seriously and uh, reading is the foundation of knowledge. You cannot know except you read. So you must always ensure that you read your books, you are attentive in class and that you read after classes. Whatever you've learned for the day, you should revise it when you get home. So reading is very important. It's the foundation of all knowledge. Those who don't read can be good, good leaders. Leaders must also read. What advice do you have for the young ones in developing a good reading culture? Yes, my advice to young ones is to ensure that every day when they have a free times after school, they devote at least an hour to reading a novel or any book of interest. And people should read every day and that they should pay attention when they're in class, when they've been taught. And they should take good notes, which they should come back home and read again and amend. That way, whatever you learn is fresh in your mind. And you don't have to overwork yourself when exams come. You must read gradually. It should, be, it should form a culture of reading uh, things and making sure that your spellings are correct. When you're not sure of a word, you go to the dictionary or you ask your parents. And these days, with the availability of internet, you can, you can get the meaning of any word very quickly. So I think the secret to being proficient in reading is to read every day and to read outside of your curriculum, to read novels and to read books of interest. And this is how far we'll go on the program this week. A big thank you to Grace, Joseph, Michelle, David, Daniela and Victor, thank you for coming on to the program. I hope you'll come back again when we do call on you. You will? Yes. Is that a promise? Yes. Yes. My name is Busola Faiga Okpeolu. Reading is power. Read a book today. Bye for now.